It had begun to seem to Graham, in this, the twelfth year of his second marriage, that he and his wife lived in parallel universes. And worse, it seemed his universe was lonely and arid, and hers was densely populated with armies of friends and acquaintances and other people he did not know. Here they were, grocery shopping in Fairway on a Saturday morning, a normal married thing to do together, although Graham could not help noticing they were not doing it together. His wife, Audra, spent almost the whole time talking to people she knew. It was like accompanying a visiting dignitary of some sort, or maybe a presidential hopeful, while he did the normal shopping. First, in the produce section, they saw some woman with a baby in a stroller, and Audra said, Oh, hi, how are you? Are you going to that thing on Tuesday? And the woman said, I don't know, because there's that other meeting. And Audra said, I thought that got canceled. And the woman said, No, it's still on. And Audra said, I wish they wouldn't double book this stuff. And the woman said, I know. And Audra said, Well, if we don't go, will everyone say bad things about us? And the woman said, Probably. And it wasn't that Graham wasn't paying attention. It wasn't that he missed the specifics. It was that there were no specifics. That was the way they actually talked. He took his time thumping melons and picking over grapefruit, and was actually rewarded for being forced to linger by remembering to buy green grapes, which weren't on the list. Who was that? he asked when Audra rejoined him. Who? She was peering into the shopping cart. That woman you just said hello to. Oh, she has a girl in Matthew's class, Audra said, selecting an apple. And a five-year-old, and a toddler, and that baby, if you can believe it. But no more, because when the baby was only a week old, she had her husband get a vasectomy. Just made the arrangements and woke him that morning and said, Guess what? You've got a doctor's appointment. And he went. She took a bite of the apple. Audra was 41 a slender woman with a not-quite-perfectly oval face. In fact, Graham sometimes thought all of Audra was not-quite. Her eyes were not-quite brown but had stalled at hazel. Her lips were not-quite full enough to be lush. Her eyebrows were not-quite high enough to be called arched. Her chin-length hair was not-quite auburn, and its messy waves were not-quite ringlets. She'd worn her hair this length for as long as Graham had known her. Apparently, if she cut it shorter, it curled up around her face and made her head look overly round. And if she grew it longer, the ends got too heavy and she had to have lots of layers put in. This was marriage. You started out thinking you'd married the most interesting person in all the world, and twelve years later, your head was full of useless hair facts. Of course, there was other stuff in there. Some milestones, having a baby, buying a house— but that was basically the essence of it. Audra was not quite beautiful, but her liveliness kept her far away from plain. One aisle over, in the breakfast cereals department, Audra suddenly stopped the cart. A young man behind them glared, but Audra paid no attention. Oh, hey, Audra said. Look. Hello. Hi. Whoa. How are you? You would have thought she was greeting a whole soccer team instead of one lady in a T-shirt and jeans with her hair pulled back into a bun. Hello, Audra, the lady said. So sorry I missed yoga this morning, Beverly, Audra said. She cleared her throat. Or, um, I mean, Meninder Prem. Sorry again. I forgot that you go by your spiritual name now, right? Even in the supermarket? You can call me Beverly, the lady said neutrally. But please remember that I have a no-refund policy for late cancellations and no-shows. Of course, Audra said. It's just that this morning we had a slight... Well, I don't know if you would call it a family emergency, more of a family situation, regarding my mother-in-law and an ancient jar of capers in her fridge and a trip to the hospital. Audra's tendency to lie could still shock Graham. His mother lived in Ohio, and as far as he knew, she was perfectly healthy although she did have a habit of leaving things in the refrigerator for a terrifyingly long time. I'm sorry to hear that, Beverly said. There seemed to be more to say, but she wasn't saying it. Yes, Audra said. 
There seemed to be more for her to say, too, but she wasn't saying it either. Finally, she made a fluttery little gesture and said, Beverly, this is my husband, Graham. Graham, this is my yoga teacher, Beverly. Graham smiled politely and shook hands with Beverly, who looked him up and down, her eyelids flickering. He was fifteen years older than Audra, and he could tell that Beverly was thinking, Oh, it's one of those marriages. Graham wanted to tell her that it wasn't one of those marriages, that his relationship with Audra was so special and unique even he didn't know what it was. But he'd given up on trying to communicate that long ago. He was tall and in good shape, with the hair at his temples just starting to go gray. But he suddenly felt tempted to stand up straighter. Was it just Graham, or was Beverly awfully judgmental, especially for a yoga teacher? So anyway, Audra said, see you next week, Beverly. They moved on, and as soon as they went around the corner and out of sight, Audra said, I completely forgot about yoga this morning, as though that hadn't been as obvious as a bumper sticker. I think Beverly could tell that, Graham said. Audra sighed. Maybe so. I don't know why I ever thought yoga class early on a Saturday morning was such a good idea. I guess I must have been feeling particularly empowered when I signed up. They saw their appliance repairman, Brady Shannon, in the ice cream aisle, and Graham knew that Audra would have an extra long talk with Brady, because she believed that if you were very, very nice to repairmen, they responded very, very quickly the next time you needed something repaired. The fact that this theory had proved very, very untrue had not shaken her belief in the practice.